Good morning students, when we study the subject language, linguistic and prosody, we come across a fascinating concept that is Sapir-Whorf hypothesis. Many students are unable to understand the concept because of lack of published videos here on YouTube. So here we are going to discuss the concept Sapir-Whorf hypothesis, the term generally derived from the name of the two linguist scholar Benjamin Lee Wolf and Edward Sapir. Alright, so we will discuss this concept in brief and we will touch on the important points that you have to remember from competition examination point of view but before opening this video if you're one of those students who are preparing for UGC net in English literature or any other competitive exam then you can simply check out our smart study material where we provide you with the courses video lectures and everything that is required for you to crack the exam visit limitlessliterature.com to know more about our books and courses and now without any further ado let's begin with this video As we know that language is a powerful tool to understand the world, language has the power to describe the world. I am using the language to teach you, you are using the language in everyday life to get the work done. We speak language out of our will and we use language as much as we use oxygen to live. And on the other hand, it is also used how we understand the reality. I am using the language to tell you something. You are listening to my language to understand what I am trying to say. So you are here to learn something and as you keep on learning, your perception also changes. So that's true. Language is used to convey our thoughts as well as it also shapes our thoughts. I love reading books. That means I love language. And every time we learn something, every time we listen something to a language, uh, we can say that there is change in our brain. So language works at cognitive level. Alright, so Sapir-Whorf hypothesis works on how language changes our way of thinking or perceiving the world. For example, there are colors blue, dark blue, light blue, sky blue, navy blue, royal blue, indigo, etc. So if there is a fashion designer or a painter or artist, his perception of these colors will be quite different. If you are an artist, your perception of blue color is different from the person who has no knowledge of blue color. The blue color is blue for a painter, but his reality of understanding the blue color is entirely different from how I look at the blue color. So the language is built. The vocabulary is developed because there are things that we want to discuss precisely like blue, dark blue, light blue. So painters invented all these words. So that's the hypothesis that language shapes the reality. The often cited example for this is Hopi language. Yes, the difference between English language and Hopi language. Hopi language is spoken by a tribe in the United States. So it is easy to compare both Hopi language as well as English language. So in Hopi language, there is no function of tenses. In English or Hindi, we have past tense, future tense, present tense. But in the Hopi language, there are no tenses. So English has words like yesterday, tomorrow, but it does not exist in the Hopi language. Example for this is I will do my work tomorrow. But the Hopi tribe will say that my homework is in progress. Another example can be, I did my work yesterday, but the same sentence in Hopi would be, I have completed my work. So for the Hopi tribe, the language is continuous. But for English people, sentences come with expiration date. I have completed my homework yesterday. That's expiry date. I have done it. It's gone. It's yesterday. But the Hopi language is more about what's going in the present moment and that also influences their lifestyle. They are happy people. Yes, Hopi people are very happy. They don't think about past because they don't have past tense. They don't have future tense. Continuously living in the present moment, having long term plans. They respect their elders because they think that wisdom they received from the elder people is continuous, not a part of time. Wisdom accumulated over generations and transferred to the next generation. Generation. So language is not only a powerful communication tool, but it also works at cognitive level. How we think, what we think and how we perceive reality are shaped by the language we listen to, the books we read, so on and so forth. So that's the hypothesis famously known as Sapir-Whorf hypothesis. And that's all what we have to discuss in this video. I hope that you found the video helpful and I also hope that you have understood this hypothesis. Do let me know your doubts in the comment section below. I will see you soon in the next video. That's it for this. Thank you.